to kill himself. Save us the trouble. piece of stone. Who's the lucky customer? Don't rightly know. You mean not dead yet? Dead two years, if he is dead. Hey, this is a rather interesting line of work you're in. Uh, can't complain. Buried the barber yesterday. Now well, that's it. Thank you. Oh, hey. How would you like to ride over to Wagon Mound with me and make two dollars? I already got two dollars. Thanks, just the same. Well, I reckon the women will meet me at the bridge. You know, the first stone I took over to Wagon Mound, I started to cross that bridge like an idiot. Darn it, had my head blowed off. You don't say. Must be mighty touchy folks live out that way. Son, if you had $100,000 stashed away, you'd be a mighty touchy yourself. Get up. How to do? Morning. Hey, uh, whiskey, please. 
Hey, you, uh, do you mind if I borrow your fixings there? Help yourself, Brent. Thanks. Thanks. <clears throat> Riding through? Hmm. Mound where, friend? Yeah, wagon mound, friend. Wagon? You hear that, Claude? The traveler's going to wagon mount. Do you know Mommy Gade? No, can't say I do. You'll meet her. She'll be that nice old lady that'll put a bullet in your head. What's your line, friend? I, uh, sell. Sell what? Notions. You take my advice, you hear? Stay out of Wagon Mountain. Ain't nothing there but a burnt out town and five widows. Well, maybe I could do a job of selling. Maybe I got some money to spend. Hmm. Only $100,000 in gold does buried somewhere, that's all. Huh. Buried gold doesn't draw much interest. You wrote an awful lot of interest around here. But them McDade girls cools them off pretty fast. Did you ever hear the McDade boys? Oh, those McDades, huh? They pulled their last job about two years ago. The Red Drop mine shipment. They stuck it up and beat it back to Wagon Mount. It was a nice little town then. Mm. Take the gold with them? Mm-hmm. A lot of good it did them. Posse right on their heels. They hold up in the barn to make a stand. You know what? Somebody threw a lighted lamp in the window. They will smoke them out. But that lamp landed smack dab on the top of a keg of powder. You know, that's a mighty interesting story. There's only one thing wrong. What's that? I uh, hear one of those McDades has been operating up in Dakota country. Sure, the one that got away. Which one? You name him, friend. Boone, Prince, Matt, Roy. Take your pick. We found three bodies in the ashes. One of them ducked out of that barn before it went blue. Well, I wouldn't count on him to leave that gold lying around. Oh, it's there all right. He wasn't caught in no baggage when he left. I was in that posse, friend. I helped turn that town upside down looking for that loot. Never found a smell of it. You just ask what them widows is hanging around for. Just go ahead, ask. Yeah, I was wondering about those widows. They'll be there, waiting. Ma and those four wives taking over that hotel. They're waiting for that living McDade to come back so they can speak that gold dust. And they don't want no nosy strangers prying around. Huh. Yeah, well, thanks for the entertainment. You don't believe us, do you? See that? A luck piece. McDade luck piece. All four of them had them. Used to wear them around their neck. She ever tried to shoot a $20 gold piece on the fly? And McDade can do it. Them all can do it. And I hear tell them girls can do it, too. So where'd you get this? I'm laying alongside the barn after we put that fire out. Yeah, that's a nice little souvenir. Well, as long as you're planning on going to Wagon Mount, I'll buy you your last drink. Thanks, but that one hasn't been put in the bottle yet. Too bad, Claude. I would have liked to know him better.
What are you looking at? You seen the sign. My name's McDade. What's yours? Keel. Dan Keel. You know where you're at? I saw your sign. It says keep out, don't it? Why didn't you? A fella told me about this place. Said if I was ever in trouble to head for here and ask the lady of the house to put me up. What fella? We didn't change cards. What'd he look like? I never saw him, Claire. It was dark in that cell. Cell? We spent the night together in jail up in Dakota Territory. I told him I had a job of work to do in these parts, and he expected to do some hard running afterwards. That's when he mentioned Wagon Mouth. What was he in for? I never heard. Come morning, he was gone. Did he leave no word for me? Think back, mister. Didn't he tell you nothing to tell me? Would uh, you mind getting me my waistcoat, please? Thank you. You lose something, mister? have the makings on you, would you? Answer what I asked you. No, ma'am. Don't lie to me, mister. What would I want to lie for? My trail's hotter than the 4th of July. You probably heard some of the fireworks. I heard them. <sighs> I'm played out. I couldn't beat my own mother from a standing start. You're all the luck I got left, good or bad. Oh, I know what you're thinking, ma'am. If the law should track me here, you're in for trouble. The law don't come to Wagon Mound. You got yourselves all fixed up, huh? It won't do you no good. You just stay in the night. Who is he? Says his name is Keyhole. Dan Keyhole. You want someone should sit up with him, I? No, I don't. I don't want any of you going near him. Is he handsome? I don't know. I'm too old to tell. A man on the dodge in strange country. And he just happens to stumble into Wagon Mound. That was a piece of luck, wasn't it? Turned all luck. Well, 
reckon you got a right to know. Somebody steered him here. What do you mean? Somebody passed the word that he'd find a welcome in Wagon Mound. That ain't so strange. It could have been just about anybody. Could have been Matt. No. Why not? Why not my men? Or hers. Or hers, the cause. If it were my boy, he'd have sent word to his ma. Or to us. One of us. Well, how do we know he'd send word? We sat in this hole for two years waiting for him to come back. How do we know he's coming back at all? Oh, he'll be back, Ruby. He's a married man. Also a very rich one. Now the gold doesn't have to be divided four ways. How do we know there's any gold? How do we know it ain't just a trick to keep us here to her as old as she is? You know because I say so. Stay away from that keyhole, man. You hear? I got a boy out there, someplace. I can't rightly put a face nor a name to him, but I know he's there. And I know he's dependent on his ma to ride his fences for him. Now, one of you belongs to him by the laws of God in this territory. And when he comes back to claim his property, well, he's going to find everything just like he left it. I mean, everything. Now, go on, get up to bed. Set next to place for Mr. Kehoe? <laughs> How would I know? You've been thinking about him all night, huh? I haven't even seen him, except to help carry him up to bed. Mm -hmm. We'll save your dreams. You'll not have eyes for you, not in that black sack. When I was a little girl, I used to play with toys. Now that I'm a bigger girl, I'd rather play with. Where is he? Under the table. He's still here, ain't he? Oh, he's here all right. My, don't we all look lovely this morning? Well, it's just common decency to look after our appearance. Well, common it is. I'd argue about the decency. I don't see no bird nests in your hair. Oh, what a stink. That's French perfume. Prince bought it for me when he got out of jail in Chicago. <laughs> you all kill me. A man sleeps under our roof for the first time in two years, and you all remember your women. Running around like a bunch of scared chickens. That's what you sound like this morning, too. A bunch of cackling hens. Lord, thanks for the vittles, amen. What about Mr. Kehoe? Won't he be wanting some breakfast? He had his. Is he feeling any better, Ma? I expect so. He's a big man, that one. Strong. Well, eat your breakfast. What's wrong with you? You all got the pip? My sister's in law upset today. A man's come into their lives to remind them of their widowhood. We don't need no reminders. We got Ma. You watch your tongue. As soon as you vet, you get upstairs and then get into some decent clothes. Wash that rouge off your face. You look like a dance hall girl. <laughs> you take that thing out of your hair. What's the matter? You all forgot you're married women? On the contrary, Ma. Mr. Kehoe's sudden arrival has uh, freshened the memory of their loss. Mm, pig's eye it has. I ain't nobody's fool. I aim to see he leaves here today. Don't seem right, putting a bullet in a man and throwing him out like that. Well, I'll decide what's right. Sabine, as soon as you've had breakfast, you get up there and fix his bandages and tell him to get his day's rest, because you will get nothing else here. Go on now, eat your breakfast. Come in. According to Ma, we're about to lose you, Mr. Kehoe. 
I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I'm Sabina McDade. I dressed you last night. Don't you remember? I wish I did. I was referring to your wound. Sit down. Much obliged for the patchwork. Oh, we doctor all our sick animals, Mr. Kehoe. Where will you go from here? Back to Dakota? Why Dakota? Thought you had a friend there. Not in Dakota or any place else. Judging from the scars I counted on you, you have plenty of enemies. You must have at least one friend. Well, I thought the old lady might be a friend, but you tell me she's turning me out tail over tea kettle. What about the man who sent you here? What about it? Was he any of these? The boys? They looked like they knew what was coming. You see your friend, Mr. Kehoe? No. Well, that's disappointing. I was hoping you'd say yes. Then instead of merely suspecting it, I'd know you were a faker. How so? But if you'd pointed out one of those men as your friend, uh, you see, Mr. Kehoe, that's not a photograph of the McDade boys. They never had one taken. I figured that. Since we're identifying McDades, which one were you paired off with? Boone was my husband. Still is, for all you know. Yes. You don't sound overjoyed. I'm not sentimental, Mr. Kehoe. Least of all about Boone. We'd been married exactly two hours when he walked out of our hotel room to get some whiskey, he said. A week later, I picked up the paper and read where he and the others had robbed a touchstone bank. So you hightailed it for Wagon Mound to get your cut. I can't deceive you, can I, Mr. Keogh? You wouldn't wait two years for any man. Money, a pile of it, that would be worth waiting for. I never pretended otherwise, not even to Ma. It wasn't necessary. She knew what was due, Boone's wife. She even gave me the wedding ring off her own finger to make up for the one he promised me. Beside Ma, every man I ever met looked like a weakling and a fool. And if I were you, Mr. Kehoe, I wouldn't lie to her. Or try to play any games with me, either. There's a few I'd like to try, miss. Come in, Ma. Wished I was in Tennessee, sitting in a big armchair. One arm round the whiskey jug, the other round my... Good morning, miss. It's a beautiful morning. Eyes like yours, miss, must see beauty wherever they look. Have a hot biscuit, mister? Thank you kindly. My name's Dan. My name's Bertie, mister. You just let me call you mister. You don't know how good that sounds to me. For a man who doesn't have a woman of his own, this is a real treat. <laughs> oh. Cooking biscuits, nothing. I used to be on a stage in Chicago. I was a dance. I mean, I was an actress. Now, you didn't have to tell me that, Miss Purdy. You've got a real flavor in your voice. Have I really? You weren't in the theater. I've been privileged, ma'am. All the world is a stage. Uh, pardon me.
Uh, forgive me for staring, miss, but for a second there, I uh, thought that bullet had sent me to an angel. No angel, Mr. Kehoe. I'm afraid here we're all cursed for the sin of violence. All my life I've fought violence, fought it with fist and gun. Whom do I have the honor of addressing? I'm Orly, widow to Roy McDade. Oh, perhaps not, Miss Orly. Maybe Roy is the one who was spared, uh, unless the good Lord has other plans for you. Ruby McDade, from El Paso. Ah, the city of sin. I loved it. You know, the old woman, she don't miss so many times. You're a lucky man. Yes, I've had many complaints to that effect. I don't complain. I'd like some of your luck. I'd be delighted to share it with you, Miss Ruby. used to warm up after taking a bath. Oh, thanks, but I don't think... Uh... You know, first time I saw you, I said, he makes me feel like I used to with my husband, Prince. It must be the mustache. Prince have a mustache? No, that's what I mean. I always wondered what it'd be like to get kissed by a man that did have... Uh, Miss Bertie, you got me all wrong. I'm not the kind of man to take liberties with a married woman. Didn't I mention I'm a widow? How do you know? I just know. Prince wouldn't have run off like that. He always did just what the others was doing. If they wanted to stay and get blown up, he'd stay and get blown up, too. Well, looking at you, I would say that was mighty short-sighted of him. Yeah. I was awful sad about Prince. I miss him something terrible. A woman doesn't hold a candle to a man for company, do you think? Well, that uh, depends on your point of view. You must be freezing in there. Come on out. I won't look. Well, if you're not a coming out, I'm a coming in. Wished I was in Tennessee. Come up, Mr. Kehoe. Company? We don't encourage callers, Mr. Theo. Well, maybe you ought to change your ways. Batch of beautiful widow ladies and all. <laughs> the callers we do get don't come courting. They come hunting something. Maybe the same thing you're hunting. I'm not hunting anything, Miss Sabina, except a little peace and quiet. Don't touch that bell rope if you want to stay in one piece. What is it, a dynamite fuse? <laughs> The relic of the old days, Mr. Kehoe. When the boys used to come back from their business trips, they flashed a signal from up there on the rim rock. Then when it was safe for them to come on in, Ma used to signal them back by ringing the bell. You figure there's a McDade up there now waiting to hear it ring? I don't, Mr. Kehoe. But Ma still thinks there'll be a signal flashed any day. That's why she wants one of us to be on the watch. Well, that's a kind of a thankless job if you don't believe he's coming back, isn't it? We take turns. Besides, it's a quiet place to do my accounts. Accounts? Oh, yes. We're in trade, Mr. Kehoe. We raise chickens. Ma trades the eggs in Touchstone for supplies. Did you think we had some invisible means of support? Well, I can't say I've given the subject much study, Mr. Barnard. Uh, how is the egg business these days? At the moment, there isn't any. The hens aren't laying. 
Maybe you need a new rooster. Penny for your thoughts, Mr. Kehoe. Oh, I wouldn't rob you. Wouldn't you? I got one thought you can have. How much will it cost me? $20 gold piece. Well, what's your thought, Mr. Kehoe? That you're a worse liar than I am. Bina! The Bina! Yes, ma'am? You seen anything of that keyhole, ma'am? Well, have you lost him? That don't signify. Just want to make sure I ain't lost nothing else. You uh, want me, ma'am? Well, I do and I don't. What's that? You come into money? Yeah, in a way. You uh, trust me with my gun? Thank you. How come you done that? Wished I was in Tennessee, setting in a big up. Yes, sir. A lot of you. I know what you're all day dreaming about. You can forget it right now, because that ain't going to happen. I don't know which of my boys is alive, and you don't know which. But one of you belongs to him. And don't you forget that. Myself, I wouldn't give a plug nickel for the lot of you. But I didn't do the picking. They'd done it for themselves, and a fine lot they picked, too. A fussing and a fidgeting ever since that blame keyhole man come here. Were you calling me, ma'am? If I was to call you what I'm thinking, this here air'd be blue, mister. I got just two words for you. Pack. Go. I've been packed ever since last night. The uh, way things stand, well, I figured that that uh, fellow in Dakota must have given me the wrong address. He's hurt. His horse ain't. Ma, Ma, look. Mr. Kehoe may be leaving sooner than he expected. Go on, get in the house. Go on. Get a move on, all of them. Go on, get. Stay out of sight, Mr. So there won't be no trouble. Send who on out? You sure, son? Sure, I'm sure. You know who, Ma? That boy of yours. Ain't no boy of mine here. Next time it won't be your hat. Where you going, mister? Out there. You give up easy. It's a McDay thereafter. You can't stop us this time, Ma. So why don't you call it quits before somebody gets hurt? 
Don't be a fool, mister. You're caught in a rope's end, and you know it. I got a chance. You ladies have it. Hold your fire! That's him. That ain't no McDade. Something I can do for you boys? What's your name? What's yours? What are you doing in Wagon Mound? Resting. Anybody here besides you? Five lovely ladies. Well, you just saddle up. You're going back into town with us. What for? Because I say so. I don't know what business you've got in Wagon Mound. But I ain't taking no chances on it interfering with mine. You want McDade, don't you? I'm on him. For how much? Rewards, $5,000. $5,000 more if we get back the loot. You uh, keep a lookout posted here about us? I ain't got enough men. Willie here was chasing a stray horse when he spotted you. Then what's to prevent McDade from checking in any time? Collecting his loot and hightailing it out of here? Nothing. Yes, there is. Me. I'm a parlor boarder in Wagon Mound. When McDade shows, I'll pass you the word. You can pick him up and the loot in the same package. How are you going to pass me the word? You uh, live close enough to hear that church bell, youngster? We used to hear them. All right. The next time you hear it, ride for the sheriff here. And ride along back with him if you want to see a dead McDade. We'd sooner have him alive. But we'll take him any way we can get him. It's a deal. Obliged to you, mister. All the other way, ma'am. You walked out that door, I figured we'd seen the last of you. Your sheriff can't handle more than one idea at a time. When he goes hunting in McDade, he wouldn't have a keyhole at any price. So I noticed. Tom Larrabee ain't no fool, mister. Why didn't he take you in? Because I promised him bigger game. What game? The loot. And the man he really came for. My boy. If I grab, I wouldn't put it past you. He believe you? Why shouldn't he believe me? There's a reward of $10,000. I've known men who'd sell their mothers for less. So have I. Well, I reckon we're quits, mister. You say so. Better not ring that church bell of yours. That's the signal I fixed up with the sheriff. He'll come running if he hears it. You catch up your horse and get some supper inside you. You want to make tracks tonight. You think I'm playing the sheriff's game? No, I don't think that. Then why not let me hold up here for a while till certain people forget what I look like? I'm a light eater, and I'll lend a hand with the chores. We've done without you for two years, mister. I reckon we can go on the same way. Well, I guess you got your reasons. I got them. Four of them. One other thing. When I go, my property goes with me. How much property you claim to be missing? Not much, ma'am. Not above uh, $20 worth. Ma? You say the sheriff's no fool. Don't you think it might occur to him to post a lookout somewhere to see that Mr. Kehoe stays put? Might. If Mr. Kehoe didn't have to go out there this afternoon. They might have shot him, Ma. Do you think it's right to make him run that risk twice in the same day? The rains are due any day now. Let him stay till then. He can get away under cover of the first big storm. The rain will wash out his tracks. That suits you, mister? Suits me. All right. But I still got four reasons for wanting you off the place. So, uh, just you don't give me another one.
going to spring? I am. You know, I always try to recognize the courtesies, Miss Sabina, like paying a debt of gratitude. Uh, you spoke up for me today. Thank you. You better not let Ma catch you around me. If the old lady had her way, you'd have seen the last of me. I thought that's what you wanted. When you went out of the bridge today, you were playing for a reprieve. And I like to see a man get his winnings. Even when you're the loser? I'm not aware I've lost anything, Mr. Kehoe. You might, if I stay here long enough. In other words, I spoke up for you because I find you interesting. Is that the case you're trying to make? It's a possibility. Well, you're quite right. When you walked up to that sheriff, I was impressed. So I decided to help you stay around a few more days. Just to see what'll happen next. You better go now. Uh, incidentally, you do know where it's hidden, don't you? Even if I did, a hundred thousand in gold weighs a great deal, Mr. Kehoe. Now, I wouldn't be able to do very much about it, would I? You could always melt it down and use it for brass knuckles. We missed your dinner, Mr. Kehoe. Still taking in the sights? That's right. I'm a very curious fellow, Miss Sabina. Maybe you'll show me around sometime. Oh, I hardly think so. I'm a melodeon player. Hmm. Wished I knowed what else he was besides sure trouble in a house with four women. You know a lot of tricks, don't you, mister? Where'd you learn how to play like that? My pa was a preacher. Had a tent show. I used to travel around with him. Played the organ, sang in the choir, passed the collection box. Hmm. Your pa's preaching don't seem to have took. Nope. Well, my boys was the same. I raised them best as I was able. They knowed their Bible as, as well as they knowed their own names. If they didn't, they got the tar licked out of them. Didn't do no good. They was bad. Bad clear through. I had to take their part, though. 
even when they was busting God's law and everybody else's. But I knowed what they was. Like I reckon your pa knowed what you was. That's right. Well, there ain't much I can do for them now. What they is, I'm doing. Them that's gone will have a decent grave and a decent stone to mark it. And the one that's left, well, he'll have his rights. After that, I wash my hands. It was the gold. The gold was a ruination of them all. Myself, I wouldn't want no part of it. Look what it did to my boys. Look what it's doing to them girls. Turning them against one another. Filling their heads full of greed and evil notions. Every one of them lusting after that gold. Oh, mister. If to a mine, I'd... I'd sink that gold in the river and tell Tom Larrabee to swim for it. But you won't. No, I won't. Because I want to see my boy again. And I know if he won't come back for nothing or, nor nobody, he'll come back for that gold. I was looking for you. I just wanted to assure myself you were still out hunting. Any luck? Sure. I found all that gold you were so worried about. Sold it in Touchstone and came back here rich to take the woman of my choice. Hmm. Very fanciful, Mr. Kehoe. How does your taste run? Oh, to just about uh, your shade of air. Uh, about so high and waist about like this. Then I've got a chance. Supposing your taste runs to the right kind of man. Well, I've had ample time to think about men. I'd say one about so high. Shoulders about like this. But you didn't let me finish, Mr. Kehoe. I'd also like a man I could trust. You see, I expect to be a rich woman very soon now. Well, maybe we could hasten that day, Miss Sabina. Maybe we could. Except... Except? Except I wouldn't trust you with a snowball and a blizzard. I'm afraid the only gold you're going to leave here with is what you brought in your pockets. Good night, Mr. Keogh.
Don't you never sleep, hombre? Don't you? Not when I get things on my mind. What kind of thing? Or maybe I shouldn't have asked. That's my husband's shirt you're wearing. I washed it for you. Oh, thanks. It's a nice shirt. Yeah, Matt liked things soft and nice. I figured you might too. Did you come here to talk about your husband? No. I was a good wife to him. That's all I got to say. Except that two years is a long time. I agree with you. So are the other girls, from what I hear. <laughs> all three of them put together wouldn't make as much woman as me. Oh, I've had a belly full of this life. Their mothers can roost here till they rot. Me, I got other plans. You want to talk about them? Yeah. When you leave, I'm leaving with you. Mm -hmm. And what will your husband say to that? I've got no husband. Are you sure? Sure. He'd have come back. He couldn't stay away from me for two years. Besides, he never ran from a fight in his life, and this was a dandy fight while it lasted. No, don't worry about Matt. He's out there on the bearing ground. And we ain't. Well, not yet, anyway. You're pretty clever, hombre. I saw how you handled the old woman. If you're smart enough, we'll be leaving here in style. Work on her. She knows where the loot is. But what about working on one of the girls at uh, Birdie? Oh, them crows don't own no more than I do. They're still here, ain't they? Like me, waiting for the dead to come alive? No, hombre. It's the old woman got the answers. He's a hard case. Pretty near bulletproof, if you ask me. She ain't manproof. No woman is. Hundred thousand, hombre. We'll be sitting in a tub of butter. We? Oui. What's mine is yours. Yeah. But right now, we're discussing money. If Matt's dead, you're out of the running. Well, I'm Matt's widow. I got a right to a share. And anything else I can get. The old woman owes me for every time I felt the flat of her hand. I ain't waiting much longer to collect. But you're asking me to do the collecting. Yeah, that's right. But I'm awful willing to pay you wages for it. Yet? On a day like this, who'd be thinking of riches? Oh, you've a beautiful soul, Mr. Kehoe. I can see you're a nature lover. Anybody's nature. If I didn't know better, I'd say that you were acting like a jealous woman, Miss Savannah. <laughs> but you do know better. I sure do, and admire you for it. You're the superior type. No nonsense about your sort of woman. As long as you're worried about that gold, you're all business. Yes, Miss Savannah. You won't be much use in any man's arms until that loot shows up. After that, uh, we might get to know each other better. Nevertheless, they did flatter him with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues.
My, that takes me back. Prince and I used to dance to that. Where are they off to? To the spring. We need water? No. That's what I figured. Go on, Ruby, catch up with him. Go on, get! gray and she only had enough to make her braid so long. I wonder where I'll be when my hair is gray. I know where I'd like to be. Where? A million miles from Wagon Mound. It's none of my business, Miss Orley, but how did a girl like you wind up with a McDade? Roy was the first person who ever made a fuss over me. I was just 16, and, and I didn't believe that he was as bad as everybody said. I thought he wanted me. From what I hear, he wanted everything in sight. Yes. Till he had it. Well, you made a bad draw, Miss Arley. But that's no reason for quitting the game. I, I don't know what you mean. 
You act like your life is over. You get yourself up like an old lady. Widow's weeds for a man who wasn't worth the powder to blow him up. You know, Wagon Mound isn't the only town on the map. Why don't you give some other fellow a chance? I want Roy McDade's leavings. of a hand as men in a harness. Never said I was. Looks like rain. You figuring to be cooking for him? No sin in it. There is if you've got a husband of your own. My husband is dead. I wished he was. There ain't a one of you ain't buried her husband ten times over since that Dan Kehoe set foot here. The rotten lot of you. Burning for the touch of him. I'm sorry, Mom. But everything's got the look of evil to you. There's no talking to you. Oh! I want to know what happened out there. Nothing. Nothing. He asked you about the gold, too, didn't he? Well, what if he did? He'll try his luck with every one of you, one way or another. But there ain't a one of you can, can tell him where it's hid. All right. Well, I'll tell you what happened. He was kind to me. And he kissed me. I'm not ashamed. <gasps> oh! He's leaving here this night. And you should pray to God to forgive the wickedness in your heart. Now go on. Get out of my sight. Pretty late getting back, hombre. You were a long time at the spring. Yeah, I was thirsty. You find out anything you didn't know? I had found out the McDade boys had real different tastes when it comes to women. Wasn't that good with Orly, was it, Dan? I'd tell you, Ruby, only we didn't talk your language. Well, then I'll tell you. She was all sad and innocent. Only she'll rip your heart out for a pair of pearl earrings, then cry because they ain't diamonds. She don't know where the money is. Do you? I told you I don't. Then that starts you and Orly off kind of even. You already made your deal, hombre. I tell you this. You're my man. And I don't share you with nobody. You're a charming girl, Ruby. Only you wouldn't fight for a man any more than you'd fight for that gold. You think I'm afraid? I think. You want that money so bad you could taste it. For two years you've been sitting around here waiting for someone to waltz in who'd do what you haven't the guts to do. Face up to a tough old lady. Now she's in there. And she knows where it is. Go on, up. You're not going. The old lady says I am. 
Oh, take me with you, please. Dad, oh, take me away from here. You're giving up your share of the gold? Oh, Ma never let it go. She's driving herself crazy in me. Hoarding it for a dead man. He'd come back if he wasn't dead. That's all dead. she's got left to bet on, Harley. There's a real glory in the old lady. She staked her whole role on those sons and lost three times. This is her last bet that her boy will come home. But what about us, Dan? Am I worth a bet? I never put a dime on anybody but myself. And I haven't lost yet. You ain't going to use that, are you? He's getting out of here. I'm driving out. I'm a fool to let him stay here this long. Kills him. Lit out on his own. That's what you wanted, wasn't it? You shut your mouth. Didn't he take anything? Yes. Your good sense, that's what he took. What'd you have to hate him for? He never did nothing to you. What about you, Sabina? You don't hold no grief for him, huh? No, Ma. Just disappointment. I guess I never would have gotten him anyway. But it sure was fun thinking about it. Harlots, the lot of you. Good evening, ladies. We were afraid you'd run off, Mr. Kehoe, without our farewells and best wishes. What'd you come back here for? I never left. Well, then you tell me where you was. You've got a right to ask, so I'll tell you. I was taking a last look for the gold. Judas. After the way we hid you here. Nobody chased me here, Ma. I came here to rob you. All of you. You've got a lot of nerve, mister, telling me a thing like that. I gotta hand it to you, ma'am. Wherever you hid that gold, you sure did a good job. I guess I could have spent a whole year and never found it, unless I suddenly got a lot smarter. So I'll be riding out the way I came in. Maybe a little ahead of the game, for having known all you lovely ladies. Miss Bertie, don't you ever stop dreaming about the stage. And keep those pretty eyes bright, so they'll always see everything beautiful. Maybe the meek will inherit the earth, Miss Orley. And a pretty girl always has a good chance. So you should be first in line with a golden bucket. Ruby, you're a danger to the whole race of men. But danger is always a fair price to pay for excitement. It's been a pleasure, ma'am. And if your husband happens to come back, I'll envy him. Ma, I'll always count myself a winner for having known a tough old cougar who knew how to love her sons better than they earned and how to give a stranger more than he deserved. 
You're a rough old buzzard. But you'll let me ride out of here because you'll be thinking of your son. And I'm not much better. I hope he comes back to you, Mom. And I hope that each of you get the man you're praying for. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'll go pack my things. Now, one day, maybe a smarter man than me will ride by this way and relieve you of that gold. If that should happen, don't feel too bad about it. It didn't belong to you anyway. Expecting you. You're leaving without the gold. What do you think? Cards on the table, Mr. Kehoe. What are you holding? Aces, back to back. I know who you are and why you're here. Who told you? This told me. Care to say where you got it? If I did, you wouldn't believe me. Cards on the table. I got it from a barkeep in Touchstone. I think not, Mr. Kehoe. I think this gold piece was given to you by its original owner. I think he sent you here to collect the hundred thousand for him. Only you decided to deal him out. I see. You got it all figured out. I'm willing to split the gold with you. Half and half. Fine. It's a deal? It's a deal. There's only one hitch. I don't know where the gold is. I do. How? I've been here two years, Mr. Kehoe. What kept you from cashing in? I needed a man with a strong arm to help me. Half and half? Half and half. Miss Savannah, you're a woman after my own heart. Tougher than wang leather, smarter than spit, and colder than January. You describe me correctly, Mr. Kehoe. Tough enough to make my own way in a man's world. Smart enough to scheme my way into the affections of a lonesome old woman. And cold enough to sell her out and sleep sound on it. We're two of a kind, Mr. Kehoe. Thank you. I'm in. Where to? Ride out of here now. When everything's dark, come back. Hitch up the buckboard. Take it across the bridge and hide it there. When it's safe, I'll meet you. Ma, he's on his way. No, nobody. When it comes to thieving, there's nothing like experienced help. Come on, I'll show you where it is. You sure you can? Quite sure. I wouldn't bet any money on it. You know, that gold just walked right up and whispered into my ear. Why, you knew. All the time you were telling us your fine speech. Oh, I always believe in giving value received. Well, you got what you came for. You didn't have to share it with anybody. Why are you waiting here for me? Oh, there's no point in winning just for the game, not when you're alone. Could have been one of the others. Not for $50,000, Martin. So, you paid your money and took your choice. Why not? You offered me half, didn't you? Now you're talking like an honest man. They say that's the kind you can't cheat. Ma! Hey, Ma! Sabine ain't in her room. She's gone, I tell you. Ah! 
dirty thieving rat. It's been there all the time. And they won't keep it. I promise them that. I blame Kehoe has laid his own trap. How does it feel to be rich? You want to know. Yeah, I got it all. The take of the letter, all the gold in the world. What's so funny? <laughs> That last McDade turns out to be your husband. He'll be after me like a storm of wildcat. Boone was the one who escaped. But he won't be coming after you when he's dead. Ooh. And uh, he wasn't my husband. The closest I ever came to marrying Boone was watching him get drunk once in Denver, the night before he was killed. He told me about the gold, so I went after it. Passed myself off as married to him. The truth? The truth. <laughs> We're a pair of beauties, aren't we, Dan? How did you find out where the gold was? I watched Ma when she went out to check it. You? The same. Except I had to wait for the right man. And in walked Dan Kehoe. Well, the old fox, she's still trying to win. minutes, they'll be sitting in our laps. A reasonable man always settles for half, a quarter, or whatever he can get. Have you gone crazy? Here, this one's ours. You know where the mission is outside Los Pedros? I'll find it. Take that to the priest. Tell him to put it with the rest of my money. I'll meet you later. All right. We're glad to see you, gentlemen. You just keep your hand clear of that gun belt. There's the loot, uh, Sheriff, all accounted for. We'll see about this. Figured we had a McDade. Who rang that bell? I did. You did? Yeah, I found the gold and set out to return the same to rifle owner. People being what they are these days, I figured it wasn't safe carrying all that loot without a proper escort. So I rang the bell for help, and you gentlemen did your duty. I thank you. Well, if you wanted us so bad, why did you run so fast? Yeah, well, now, Sheriff, you might have noticed that I was traveling with a lady. Turned out she was more interested in the gold than she was in me, so... Pulled a gun and tried to make me run for it. Took a lot of fast talking to make her see the right way of things. One of them McDade widows. Yeah, which one was it? Now, Sheriff, you know a man of honor can't answer a question like that. Sure, five thousand's missing. Yeah, my property, sir. Legal reward for returning the gold. Oh, I reckon he's right. Hey, Sheriff, <clears throat> you know about those McDade women. You know, it takes a man like you and me to understand them. Driven half wild with greed and loneliness, the poor souls, they need all the charity we can give them. Well, it's been a pleasure to do business with an honest man. Well, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Well, now, there's a real fine gentleman. You don't mean him like that no more. All right, let's load up the gold. Come on. All the saints in heaven. Can this be a miracle, my son? She came to tell me you'd been hanged. Who told you? Your lovely wife. Her with the flaming red hair. My wife? She claimed to be. She showed me the wedding ring when she came for your possessions. You didn't give her my money. Yes. Every cent of it. Oh, my poor frazzled brain. Where'd she go? Oh, what a bundle of tricks she was. Now that I think of it, 
She said she was going to Albuquerque, but she tore off like a wild hare to the border. your cash, partner. That's right generous of you. You know, for a while there, Mr. Bino, I almost took you for a crook. You've got a suspicious mind. You uh, had the money. What'd you wait for? Like a fella said once, there's no fun just winning the game when you're alone. Oh, I see. You figure we'd be uh, fit company for each other? Haven't I proved that, Mr. Keyhole? Get in? This will be a rare education. <laughs> 